What's poppin' y'all? It's your boy Pee Wee The Plug. Welcome back to another episode of NBA Weekly. As you can tell by the title, we're gonna be reacting to our first mock draft of the summer from The Athletic and Sam Vecini. Um, I do wanna say before we dive in it, I've been going all last week. I'm recovering from a cold that I had. Um, you know, Chicago weather is all over the place. We finally got our hot weather starting to break out. And um, every summer I get, I get hit with it, a little cold from uh, being 92, 93 degrees outside, then you come into the house and the AC is blowing uh, on full throttle. I'm in the basement, it's extremely cold. My body is going from extreme hotness temperature to extreme coldness temperature, and I always get sick from that. Uh, so I had to take a, a week off, learning to, to allow myself to rest and recover whenever I'm not feeling at my best. So I'm back, the content is back, and as I promised and told y'all, we reacting to this mock so in san vicini's and the athletic uh mock draft the first overall pick that we have in front of us they have the magic taking jabari smith which to me uh is a bit of a curveball i've seen a lot of different mock drafts i keep up with the uh, nba draft all year long and i got different people that i watch and, and communicate with and i would say none of the ones that i've seen have had jabari smith as number one it's either been chet um, and I've seen Paulo, but it's been a lot of chat um, because of who runs the Magic now. They're the same group that drafted Giannis Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee. Uh, they also have uh, drafted Jonathan Isaac. They love the length, uh, rangy type athletes who have the size and mobility. That seems to be their theme. So a lot of people are, are predicting them to take Chet. So Jabari Smith Jr. Um, is interesting here. <clears throat> They're saying... Smith is his favorite prospect in his class because of his co his combination of skills um, uh, are in most in demand in the NBA right now, which I agree. He can shoot the ball. He has good size and he, he ranks to be or projects to be um, a real good on ball defender. Me personally, which at some point I will do my own mock and I always do a what would I do mock draft and what I think is going to happen mock and what I would do. Uh, Paolo Bancaro is my number one pick for the Magic just because I feel like he's everything that they need right here in this pick. Like the Magic have a really good team. They have some really good young players, Franz Wagner, uh, Wendell Carter, Mo Bamba, whatever happens with him, Cole Anthony, RJ Hampton, Markel Foles, Jalen Suggs. They have Chumo Kiki. All of those guys that I named, though, do not project to be a number one scoring option like legit and i think that's what paulo bancaro is going to be he's going to be a legit 20 point score maybe in his rookie year i could see him being close to that 18 20 points six seven rebounds and if they can add that type of go-to score to the the group that they already have man they could they could really they could really be on to something out there in orlando but jabari smith jr for them i'm not mad at i'm not mad it's a little different but what I will say is it's hard to be mad at it when we know these are the top three. And whatever order you have, it's very hard to argue because all of these three guys can really play basketball. But, but for when I'm looking at uh, the history of the guys who run the Magic, and I'm also looking at a little bit of what they would need, Jabari is going to be able to score the basketball, but I think he's going to be a very good number two complementing somebody. And I think a guy like Paolo can be your number one. Uh, option on, on, on an every night type basis. Number two, we have, and I'm going to try my best not to reveal too many picks at once, but number two, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they have them taking Chet. Um, and I feel like that's exactly the position that the Thunder are in. Like, they're in that whoever <laughs> doesn't go number one, um, we're just going to take, the, like, number two. So, um, I like Chet here because they the, the center position is something that they don't have. Uh, they also don't have that four, and I would love to see a pick and roll duo with like a Shea Giddy with Jabari. I would really love if Jabari Smith Jr. probably went to the Thunder. As much as I like Paolo, as much as I think he is a number one scorer, uh, I think Jabari just complements Giddy and Shea Gilgix Alexander so much better because of how he can shoot the ball. Um, and we know Shea has been one of the most productive driving players 
you know, attacking the rim scores in a half court. So if you can allow him to penetrate and he's finishing, or if the defense collapse, he can kick it out to a Jabari Smith Jr. And he has the size to be able to shoot over closeouts and not be affected by closeouts. That would be very, very nice. And then you have the pick and roll with Giddy, his playmaking prowess with Jabari Smith picking and popping. That would be a nice little trio that they would have. Um, out there in Oklahoma City and that four position and the front court position just in general is something that they've been lacking and really trying to figure out so I would love to see Jabari there but if they had Chet Holmgren uh, defensively he's going to make he's going to make a lot of plays for them um, I think also he can space the floor not as good as Jabari but with his size he definitely can space the floor and at 7-1 he has the uh, unusual ability to attack closeout and put it on the floor enough to get to the basket so I'm not mad at that pick either and then at number three Shout out to my boy, Hottie. He's a Rocket fan. We have Paolo Bencaro. Paolo Bencaro, um, I like all three of these guys. Jabari Smith Jr. is probably the closest to me um, just because I predicted his jump into the top three before it happened in the preseason of, of, of the NCAA. But Paolo, I really love because I love his game. And Houston scares me for all of these guys, especially Jabari and Paolo, for the simple fact that they're scoring. You know what I mean? Scoring is a big part of what, what they do in their appeal as prospects. Chat on the other side. You love the fact that he can shoot it for a size and put the ball on the floor a little bit at 7-1. is really, really good. A good luxury to have. But you're looking at him for his defensive prowess, prowess uh, him being able to swallow up defenders, got, uh, make guys change and adjust their shot at the rim, blocking shots, um, and just the overall length, troubling the offensive opponent on any given night. Uh, but with Houston... The lack of playmaking bothers me a little bit. And maybe I'm overthinking it because maybe you put Paolo there and it opens up playmaking opportunities for Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green. Maybe they, it, it helps them grow and make better decision making. Maybe their, their playmaking w was a lack thereof last year because they just didn't have enough talent. Maybe that's that too. But when I look at a guy like Paolo, um, he's also a guy that can get his own. Uh, even Jabari, Jabari is going to need somebody that can set the table for him because it isn't like he's a guy that you just give the ball and move out of his way. You know what I mean? That That's just not the way he plays. So I look at those guys. And even if Chet went there, you know, just looking at somebody that can sometimes get them the basketball and create something for them because um, two out of the three aren't shot creators. But if the Rockets did get Paolo Banquero going forward, him and Jaden Green as a, as a duo offensively, could be a very scary tandem for years to come so i'm starting to like the houston rockets fit for paulo uh because i'm also seeing that it can be more realer and realer the, the more i look at these mocks and here put my ear to the streets or whatever but that is one of my concerns with the rockets is that they don't have that natural point guard i know the kpj experiment uh was up and down last year it definitely had its highs but it also had its lows um, and I'll be very surprised if they didn't run with it this year. They do have Deshaun Nix there, who hopefully gets some more run his second year. Um, and they are a growing team. Anything can happen. They'll probably be in the lottery again next year. Maybe they find they, they, they point guard of the future in the next couple years to come. We'll see. Um, but I think you can't go wrong with these top three picks in any order. All three of these teams are going to get very, very talented guys. Uh, and that's the, pretty much that. This is the important part of the mock after three. And at number four, Sacramento Kings. I'm very surprised. I'm, I mean, not surprised, but I'm very eager to see who they have. And they have them taking Jaden Ivey. Um, Jaden Ivey, I like as a prospect, but I'm definitely curious with how Sacramento handles this because it's been a consensus that after the top three, Jaden Ivey is probably that top four. Then it's like Keegan Murray. Then you got like AJ Griffin, Benedict Matherin, Jalen Duran, Johnny Davis, uh, Dyson Daniels is creeping up in there. So I'm very uh, Shaden Sharp, Shaden Sharp, Jaden Ivey, Shaden Sharp, Keegan Murray, and then everything else that I said. So I'm very curious to see if Sacramento goes the Jaden Ivey route after just trading Tyrese Halliburton because you didn't really want him in the backcourt sharing any ball handling duties with De'Aaron Fox. So do you go with Jaden Ivey because you think he's the best available prospect? Or do you go with Shaden Sharp because you think he, quote unquote, fits better as a lob threat, athletic wing, more size, uh, can probably play off the ball a little bit better from what we know. Um, very curious. I even seen a report today that said that they would be interested in looking to get a more established uh, player as of right now and trade the pick. Uh, four, I don't like Jaden Ivey with the Kings personally. 
Um, I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. I'm more of a shade and sharp guy, maybe even King of Murray. I want to see the Kings go out and get very skillful players. I felt like they did that when they got Halliburton. I felt like last year I was a big proponent of them getting uh, Franz Wagner. Obviously, Franz Wagner got taken uh, before that they before they could get him. But I really was pushing for that because Franz Wagner was a skilled guy who didn't always need the basketball in his hands. He could cut. Uh, he can make a pass when he did have the basketball. He can shoot, defend, good size. Man, I wanted them to get him because if they could have had Halliburton, him, and now be in a position to get this type of pick, um, you would have just had a lot of skill there. And I think that's something that they lack in Sacramento. So I'm not the biggest fan of Jaden Ivey. Not that he isn't skilled, but um, I just don't know the fit. You did so much last year of fitting and trading for fits to go right back into having another guard just kind of would blow my mind. Um, but they definitely need to figure something out. At five, they have the Pistons taking Shane Sharp. And this is what I would absolutely love. Um, the Pistons, I, I, I like Shane Sharp in, in, in that group with uh, Kay Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, um, even Jeremy Grant, depending on what they do with him. I know Shane Sharp is a bit of a mystery man, but from what I've seen and what I know about him, um, the size at 6'6 six, six is incredible. Uh, you want to take advantage of having K be a 6'6 six, six point guard. You want to use that size. The size, uh, the ability to dunk the ball, athleticism, uh, lob threat, and I like the way he shoots the ball. It's been a little inconsistent. Um, but I think with some fixes and some some hours in the gym at the professional level, his 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 uh his accuracy from three could be a lot more better because he has a little technical mechanical issues um, as far as kicking his leg out on certain attempts, fading on shots. If he just puts some hours in, um, you know, with the professional help of like an NBA franchise and organization, I think he can translate to being a very very good three point shooter. Uh, maybe high 30s 40 from anybody is amazing but you take his athleticism the potential shooting the basketball and if he is coached by Dwayne Casey and we see some of the wing defenders that the, the Raptors were able to develop under Dwayne Casey he could be a nice little two-way wing next to Cade and that would be extremely nice for Detroit in my opinion so I love Shane Sharp there Indiana Keegan Murray Keegan Murray just feels like an Indiana Pacer type player very low maintenance gets the job done blue collar works hard nothing flashy just simple basic and just gets it done I think pairing him with a guy like Tyrese Halliburton in the pick and roll uh one and four will be very 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 good you still got Chris Dorte there Buddy Hill the Miles Turner is still there they got to figure something out with that but I think Keegan Murray is definitely a guy that can come in and play extremely well with Tyrese Halliburton in the pick and roll so I, I absolutely love this pick and I think this is one of those picks that we can like mark down Unless the King shocked the world and take Keegan at four, which I don't, I, I just don't see without a trade happening. Uh, I think we can sign, seal, and deliver that the Indiana Pacers will take Keegan Murray. They're going to take Keegan Murray 100% if he's available there. I even see them uh, saying he resembles Tobias Harris. That's one of the comps that I have for him as well. A guy that's going to be able to get it in the three-point line, the mid-range, get to the rim grab it off the basket uh defensive rebounds pushing and transition himself Tyrese Halliburton can then spot up they're going to be very very good if they're able to to be able to snag Keegan Murray at six I love that pick a lot Portland they got Portland taking Jeremy Sohan from Baylor it's also been reported that they might be willing to trade their pick and look for somebody that's more established and NBA ready uh, from day one I do like Jeremy Sohan uh, with Portland though he seems like the type of forward and forward that they've been looking for since the Dame tenure right um, a guy who can guard all over the place he has true one through five uh, potential as far as guarding and then on the offensive side with his size he can handle the ball make a play or two he can cut move without the basketball he's not shy of shooting it uh, didn't have the best success but he did make a respectable amount at Baylor as a catch and shoot threat um you know around 31 32 percent to me that's really really good when you see so many guys who aren't even trying to shoot the basketball like the ben simmons if you could just have somebody that's willing to shoot it um you know it, it, it could go a very long way but I, I do love jeremy sohan for them um and i think he can unlock some things that we haven't seen um with damian lillard we just haven't seen him with a a playmaking four and jeremy sohan fits that jared vanderbilt aaron gordon draymond green new type of four that the league is looking and pushing for uh everybody wants that type of forward everybody and i think seven is high 
But in this day of age of drafting, if you have a guy that you love, even if it's it's premature, you just take the guy that you love. Phoenix has showed us that with Cam Johnson. Uh, you see the Spurs winning got Josh Pre Like, if you have a guy, go get him. And I, I kind of like, the more and more I think about it, Jeremy Sohan with the Blazers, I think I love a lot. Um, at eight, Benedict Matherin with the Pelicans. That's what I had in my mock draft, my quick little mock draft that we did um, after the lottery on the live stream. He just makes the most sense, plays so well without the basketball, athletic as hell, can defend, projects to be able to defend one through three, a guy that I can see starting, a guy that can come off the bench. Um, and even if he, when he does start, he can complement the guys that you have on that roster because Brandon Ingram is going to have the basketball, CJ McCollum is going to have the basketball, Zion Williamson is going to have the basketball. You're going to need to continue to add guys like Benedict who can really be valuable without the basketball, and they have that with Trey Murphy. Uh, adding him with that would be good. Herb Jones has showed that he can be good without the basketball. So I think they continue to do that um, with, with, with that theme. And Benedict just goes in there and meshes really well. And I think he could be a spark off the bench, uh, honestly, because I think offensively he's going to continue to grow. And if, if his offensive game, as far as putting the ball on the floor, getting his own, continues to develop, like I've seen little, little sparks in, in Arizona, at Arizona, he could be a very, very dangerous six-man, um, two-way dangerous six-man. I really like Benedict Matherin a lot uh, for the Pelicans there. At nine, we have the San Antonio Spurs taking A.J. Griffin. Um, mixed feelings about this just because you have Jalen Duran still available. You have Dyson Daniels still available. You even have Johnny Davis still available. I like A.J. Griffin, but I'm very concerned with him defensively. And I feel like that's something that the Spurs really, really, really value with their wings. You look at Devin Fasale, Keldon Johnson, uh, Lonnie Walker, Derek White. Before he was traded, they really value the defensive side of the basketball. Now, A.J. Griffin being able to catch and shoot the basketball is nice. It's a nice luxury for them to have. But just in the simple fact of defensively, he has a lot of question marks that just concern me and that I'm, I'm not too much of a fan of. So I would really like to see them maybe go in a different direction. Dyson Daniels, DeJounte Murray type backcourt would be very, very good from a size, defense, uh, and playmaking perspective. I know DeJounte isn't the best catch and shoot threat, but I think Dyson Daniels ha uh, has some potential there. I love, I love his form. He didn't have a lot of success until the end of the year, but I think if you have some patience with him it would pay off um so I'm, I'm i'm gonna say i'm not liking this one i'm not liking the aj griffin thing to me aj griffin might be a guy that potentially could fall because when you look at him defensively there's just there's just too many too too many things to worry about it's too many if for a guy of his size and what you're going to expect i think the question marks defensively just they're too overwhelming for me. So I'm going to go Jalen Duran for me or Dyson Daniels personally um, before I, I do the A.J. Griffin for the Spurs. Um, at 10, we have ah, Washington is taking Dyson Daniels. I was hoping there's some way, some small chance that Dyson Daniels could fall um, to my Knicks. But I think if the Washington Wizards get Dyson Daniels, that would probably be the steal of the draft, if I'm being honest. Dyson Daniels is probably my favorite prospect in this entire class. They have him at 6'7". We've heard that he's grown to 6'8". Reminds you a little bit of Lonzo Ball, how he advances the ball. Very, very good defensively. Gets through screens, stays on his defenders, has the length to make up for any anytime he gets beaten in any situation. Very, very good recovery. Um, like I said, the success rate with the jump shot fluctuated early on. He struggled, but then at the end of the season, he started shooting really, really well. I love the form. Um, I think it has true potential, and I love the fact that he has an interior game with his floater because a guy like him who who penetrates and, and play makes so well, we saw with Lonzo, when you don't have the interior finishing or the lack thereof or a fear of getting to the free throw line, it could it could hinder your playmaking. And I love the fact that he's aggressive. He can finish. He can shoot. He can defend. Dyson Daniels is a real gem to have. And if they can get him in D.C., you also think about Denny Avahia and the defense he played last year. Bradley, like they're going to have a really, really nice team if they can snag Dyson Daniels at 10. Dyson Daniels at 10 would be a steal. Mark my words. Please mark my words. At 11, my New York Knicks are taking Jalen Duran. A lot of this is probably going to say the Mitchell Robinson thing is a question mark. So, you know, instead of chasing him and having to pay him, you go and you replace him with Jalen Duran. I feel that. I definitely feel that. And when you look at the Knicks, um, 
perimeter aspect, we have Cam Reddish, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Derrick Rose, Miles McBride, Quentin Grimes. So I can understand why they don't want us to go and get a Malachi Branham or, or anything like that. Uh, but some of those guys just have so much upside that I think we have to go the direction. And because Mitchell Robinson probably, I just feel like he hasn't done anything recently to make us feel like he's going to require a large amount of money. You know, he's been very up and down. That was a point when Mitchell Robinson was transcending up and up and up. And it looked like, damn, the Knicks going to have to really, really pay him. But he has some injury history, very inconsistent play, still a couple bad habits. So I'm not I'm not too ready to just go out and commit to somebody else in the draft and kind of just wash our hands with Mitchell Robinson. I definitely will want to see what he wants and then move off of that. Um, but we'll see. But Jalen Duran is not a bad prospect at all. I'm a fan of Jalen Duran. Uh, I like the way he plays. I like that he's a grown man. I like some of the potential he has as a short roll passer out of the pick and roll. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes, man. We'll, we'll definitely see how that goes. At 12, they have Oklahoma City taking Uzman Diang. I like Uzman Diang a lot. Uh, very, very Oklahoma City tight with the length, the size, and just the potential. I like this pick a lot because they're a team that's going to be able to give him the opportunity to grow and develop. Um, but again, it, it, it's they have so many though. They have a Poku, they have a Darius Baisley, um, you know. So it's just like, how many guys can they draft like this and really give the proper opportunity to without their stunt uh, being like, without their growth being stunted? Because it's just so many different type of these guys that deserve minutes. Uh, but I do like the idea there. But I, I'm starting to every year I'm getting less and less happy with guys going to Oklahoma City because it's starting to be a log jam. And I don't think guys can properly develop the way we've seen them in the past. The more and more they add guys. So we'll see. I do love the pick, though. I do like Usman Dieng, um, his his upside of being able to be a shot creator and, and get his own um, looks very well. It's growing into his body, and hopefully in the next couple of years, it, it fully catches up and the stars align for him. And I think that'll be a big part of his potential. Uh, at 13, Mark Williams go to the Hornets. This just seems like a match made in heaven. Every time anybody talks about the Hornets, they want to give them Mark Williams. They need that inside interior big. He seems perfect already in the Carolina area from Duke. Uh, so this is like, this, this is perfect. I, I really don't have anything much else to say besides the fact that this is like a, a, a home run. If, if he could go to the hornets this is going to be something that everybody around the world is going to be watching the draft we all going to stand up and we all going to clap and we all going to say good job mitch cup check because that was literally it do not f that one up that's just in your lap waiting for you at 14 we have the cavaliers taking johnny davis to me this feels extremely low this is sam vicini basically saying he thinks johnny davis is going to be the guy to drop i just don't see johnny davis going this low 14 is extremely low. Uzman Dieng going before Johnny Davis. The phone calls, somebody's trading, somebody's trying to find some way to move up and get Johnny Davis if he's still available. Um at, at 14. It just doesn't it just doesn't feel right. And in all honesty though, this would be a hell of a come up for the Cavaliers to be able to get a guy like Johnny Davis at 14. But again, I just don't see it. Uh Johnny Davis, I'm not and I'm not saying Johnny Davis is a guy that has to go top eight top nine or anything like that but when you look at certain teams uh like the the spurs the wizards my knicks um uh, even oklahoma city like it's just like no they have nothing but they have nobody solidified so it's just he's too hard of a, of a talent to pass up on to allow him to go all the way to 14 in my personal opinion definitely fits the cavaliers if they had any opportunity to go out there and get him um, hell, if I was the Hornets, I would take Johnny Davis because you have another pick coming up at 15. And I don't think that the Cavaliers would take Mark Williams because they have e e Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. <laughs> you know, so I don't I, I, I don't know. Um, something about this just feels weird. But again, if the Cavs could get him, I, that would definitely be beautiful. But I just don't think Johnny Davis would be available that low, especially when you sell who uh, aj griffin with what seventh eighth something like that yeah it's just i'm not a fan at 15 they have the hornets taking uh ochai abaje from kansas uh this is a guy that i think would be good with uh the Cle cleveland cavaliers i think he can be a veteran guy uh, out of college that can come in and contribute at a high level um from day one as far as being able to find his role guard play without the basketball catch and shoot corner threes wing threes He's going to be a very, very good player. 
very, very good player. A guy that I was thinking like, man, he is the type of guy that the Memphis Grizzlies would value. Like they would put, bring him in and plug him in immediately. And I feel like he could probably do that for the Cavaliers at a high level. Hell, if he went to the Hornets, he'd be able to do it there. Um, any guy that, that has that 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", size uh, that knows the game. He's coming from Kansas, four-year guy there. We've seen how the four-year guys have played, Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado. Like, I can name all of these four-year guys that have came in and, and, and lit it up from day one. He's going to come in and help a team that's trying to make the playoffs or already in the playoffs, and I love the pick for the Hornets, actually. Uh, the only thing about it is James Booknight didn't really get run last year, and I still have high hopes for James Booknight. So to see them bring in another wing, don't know how it is. They still have Kelly Oubre. Uh, expect them to bring back or try to bring back Miles Bridges. You have um, a backcourt of Terry Rozier and Lamelo. So there's a there's a bit of a log jam there for him to get real minutes. So I prefer him with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, but Oshai Obaje is going to be very very good for somebody in that mix. Of, of, of 14 to 15 atlanta hawks they're taking malachi branham uh from ohio state he's going to be really good he, he he's definitely a guy that will go to atlanta and take some pressure off of uh trey young you know it's going to be a guy that can defend play with the ball play without the basketball a little bit of chris middleton karis the verdish he's just going to be a really really solid guy I love his size at six five gets after it defensively i could definitely see him thriving in atlanta they're going to need a guy like him um to, to you know be able to coexist with trey young but then also when trey young is not on the floor they need somebody who can control the basketball a little bit and malachi Branham can do that had a very good year as a freshman uh like i said his size is really really good and i I just feel like there's a void for that in, in Atlanta. And I hope that they hit that with this pick. Uh, it's been, you know, whether it's Malachi, whether it's Ty Ty, Jaden Hardy. I like somebody that can go in there and kind of do something when Trey Young isn't on the floor or when he even is on the floor, be able to alleviate some of that pressure because Kevin Herter ain't that guy that's going to do that. You want him catching and shooting the basketball. Uh, Bogdanovich can, but he usually comes off the bench. And, and at times... It's like they do it to Trey where they put all the pressure on him and then he comes out of the game. Bogdanovich goes in. Now he's got he's the guy getting all the pressure. They need like one more guy that could alleviate pressure of both of those guys if it's either one of them just on the floor by themselves. So I like that a lot uh, with, with, with Malachi. 17, they have the Houston Rockets taking Ty Ty Washington. Now this is this is a solid pick. It's a solid pick. I'm not the biggest fan of Ty Ty because a lot of people had him being linked to uh, my Knicks at 11, which I felt is super super high for Ty Ty. But at 17 to go to the Rockets, who need like I talked about, somebody to come in there, play the point guard position. Um, he can still score the ball, very very good. But he also protects the basketball. He, he, nice assist to turnover ratio. Uh, which is good from a young guard. So if he can go in there and set the table for Jaden Green, Jalen Green, Paulo Bencaro, uh, Shingun, Christian Wood, if they decide to keep him, they're going to need somebody who can be a point guard, also, but also knock down shots. You want a point guard who's able to create for others, but then also when Jalen Green gets going and he's doing his thing, you want him to be able to not be left alone to go double a uh, Jalen green you want somebody who could still be a threat and Ty Ty washington can be that houston may be the most ideal uh place for a guy like Ty, Ty in my honest opinion you don't want him to go somewhere where he gets lost in the shuffle trey young is gonna play so many minutes uh definitely don't want him to go to anything like the hornets uh so i, I like Ty, Ty a lot at 17 that's actually a very, that's one of my favorite picks throughout this entire mock Ty, Ty going to houston would be very very well for them I, I like that one. Um, and 18, the Chicago Bulls are taking Tari Eason from LSU. I personally have another guy in mind, but I cannot be mad at Tari Eason. This is actually somebody I would prefer um, to have seen going to the Hornets. Like, I think if the Hornets could get Mark Williams and Tari Eason, that would be an extremely good draft for them. The Bulls, he fits, but I feel like the Patrick Williams things is kind of redundant. You know, not to say that he's Patrick Williams, but they do a lot of similar things. Patrick Williams is a little bit more polished offensively. Um, I would love to personally have seen EJ Liddell go here to the Bulls. I feel like EJ Liddell is super ideal going there, be a Paul Millsap-esque power four, modern, small ball five 
type guy. I really would love EJ Liddell in a Chicago Bull uniform at Ohio State. But Tari Eason is, is, is a monster. Gr another grown man. I've seen him literally take the ball out of people's hands and go dunk it. Uh, definitely want to see the offensive side of the basketball polish up a little bit, handles a little loose. Love the fact that he hit a lot of those threes at LSU this past year, but definitely want to see him continue to put his best foot forward uh, as, as being a perimeter threat. The better he can shoot the ball, the better of a career he's going to have. Super strong and big. I wonder if he can play some small ball five. Tari Eason is a very, very big, strong, athletic dude. Um, a monster defensively though So I love Tari Easton at 18 But again, we would have much preferred him to go a little higher Around 15 to the Hornets And I would have loved to seen this be EJ Liddell But neither here nor there I think this could still work at 18 Shout out to Tari Easton um, And the Chicago Bulls At 19, they have Minnesota taking Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame Not a bad pick at all Minnesota is definitely going to need more guys who can come off that bench, create some shots uh, for themselves and for others. And he showed that he can do that. Um, my only question is how could he play with others? How is he going to look next to um, Anthony Edwards or, you know, D'Angelo Russell and, and different things like that. I, I would love to have seen them maybe go get somebody who can thrive without the basketball. Um, maybe Patrick Baldwin Jr. or something. They need somebody who can play that wing position and catch and shoot the hell out of the basketball. Because they have a lot of guys that 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 need the basketball, work well with the basketball. D'Angelo Russell, we have Anthony Edwards, hell, Carthony Towns. Get somebody who could really thrive. You know, I, mean, was, I felt like there was a lot of opportunity for somebody to get some catch and shoot opportunities, but they don't have some of the best guys. Jared Vanderbilt isn't that guy. Um, Malik Beasley was, and he thrived, but it was... It fluctuated. It was certain times when Malik Beasley can play 30 minutes, and it was certain times where you only want Malik Beasley to play 11 minutes. You know, Jaden McDaniels, he had some moments where he when he made shots. So try to find a guy who will get those opportunities, but probably make the most of it more than some of the options that you already have. Uh, but Bake Wesley could be still a very good pick here. But I would I would look at somebody like a Patrick Baldwin Jr. I know a lot of people aren't that high on Patrick Baldwin Jr. anymore. It's cool, whatever. But um, I still think he projects to be a very good complimentary player for a playoff team because of his size at 6'9 and his pretty beautiful stroke that he has from behind the arc and even in the mid-range. You take his role and you make it smaller than what it was in college. And I think Patrick Ball and Jr. has a very successful NBA career um, at the next level. At 20, we have the San Antonio Spurs taking Walker Kessler. I can see it, uh, especially because they didn't take a, a big at 9 in this mock draft. Walker Kessler, one of the best shot blockers in the in the in the NCAA, seems high at 20. Still a lot of talent in this draft. Jaden Hardy still available. Bryce McGowan's, hell, Patrick Baldwin Jr. Um, there are some guys that are, that are still on this board for, as far as this mock draft goes that I haven't seen yet. Walker Kessler is, is is extremely high, but that's something that the the Spurs need another big and, and somebody in the interior, which is why I was a little open to them taking Jalen Duran when he had the opportunity. Um, but I guess Walker Kessler could do at 20. At 21, they have the Denver Nuggets taking Jalen Williams. This is a very good pick. Um, the Denver Nuggets need a Jalen Williams type guy. Like, they need Jalen Williams, 6'6 uh, wing, um, somebody that's growing very, very rapidly over this draft process. A lot of teams are falling in love with um, just very good size, very good pace that he plays in, plays with uh, skilled Sometimes I watch him, reminds me a little bit of like Paul Pierce because he just plays like at his own speed and pace. It's not necessarily slow, but it's never sped up or made in a place where he's uncomfortable or rattled. He always has got his own little thing going. I've seen him hit threes. I've seen him finish mid-range. I've seen him guard. I like Jalen Williams a lot, and I think that's something that the Nuggets are going to continue to need around Jokic, Jamal, and Michael Porter Jr., some guys who can defend. Uh, interchangeable over the perimeter and some guys who can knock down shots when given the opportunity. J J Jokic makes everybody better. So, um, yeah, size, size and shooting is definitely something that the D Denver Nuggets will need. Um, trying to see what they say. Williams is my, is my first surprise spike up on the board. He's been a significant riser. His teams have actually gone back through the tape and done the work. There just aren't many holes in his game. He's big, standing six foot six, seven two. He's versatile on the ball, defends multiple positions, hit forty percent from three, can pass it high. I tell you, Jalen Williams, yeah, everything that I said is basically what he's saying. It's just 
it makes all the sense in the world for a team like the Denver Nuggets to take Jalen Williams at 21. Um, at 22, the Memphis Grizzlies, they've had a very good history of drafting very well, so I cannot wait to see who they have them taking at 22 via the Utah Jazz. They are getting Bryce McGowan's, my boy. Bryce McGowan's, probably one of my favorite. I, I know I said that for Dyson, but he's another one of my favorites. Bryce, Bryce McGowan's, I like. I think he's a professional bucket. Uh, I think he's going to have a lot of moments where he's just letting it rip and letting it fly. And people's going to be like, how did this guy go in the 20s? Um, has a lot to work on. He has a thin frame, but when it comes to scoring, three-level score, gets to the rim already, doesn't allow the thin frame to stop him from being aggressive, gets to the free throw line. Those are all things that make up very, very good scores. And with his size at 6'7", his offensive ability, uh, even his length def defensively, I think he would fit perfectly with the Memphis Grizzlies and would be a guy that could probably go into their star lineup in the future. Um, Bryce McGowan is that guy, though. He is that guy. Guy, this is another guy that I thought they probably would have go to the Denver Nuggets, but with the Grizzlies, he would fit into that culture very, very well too. I like Bryce McGowan's there at 22. A uh, few picks away from being wrapping up this first round, 23 to Brooklyn Nets getting Jaden Hardy. I don't like this just because we've seen him. It, it would be it would be equivalent of, of the Cam Thomas pick last year. You know, I, I think Jaden Hardy is like I'm surprised he's this low in my mock. I do not think I would have Jaden Hardy this low. I do. I hope a lot of teams don't pass up on him. Jaden Hardy still has a lot of potential. Uh, I think if you put him in NBA spacing with NBA talent, he's working to pick and roll. He's very crafty and creative. He could probably project to be a lot better than what his ranking says. He scores the ball effortlessly. He has a bag. He's natural, uh, gifted score. I think the playmaking will catch up in NBA space and with NBA talent. I, I hope he wouldn't fall to a Brooklyn Nets team that probably won't utilize him the way he needs to be or even value him. Because uh, we saw Cam Thomas just kind of sit there all year and then have to go into the G League and light it up. And it's just like, if man, if he could be on another team that needed him, we would probably get something special. I hope Jaden Hardy does not go to the Nets just for that reason. 24, Traquavion Tra 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 Smith. Um, out of NC State, smaller guard, but man, he's fearless. He is fearless. He's he's going he's going to get buckets. I do not feel like he's six four. They have six fours here. When I see him, he, he seems like he's six one. If so, if he is six four and measured that high, be real good. I see a comparison um, <clears throat> to tr to the trade man. I like it. I think it's something the Bucks need off their bench. The Bucks need more shooting and more guys that are okay with just going to get there. I've seen a lot of time in the playoffs where it's like. Guys are just looking to get the ball to Giannis so they can just go spot up. They kind of need uh, another guy off that bench that can say, okay, they're face guarding Giannis. We can't get him the ball right now. Let me just go try to get mine. And, I, and, and, and uh, Tequavion will do that. Uh, he has seen him had a very good game, a couple of good games um, that I personally watched. I think it was actually against Bryce McGowan's in uh, NC State. I hope that's the game. Um because uh, they have Sebron too. They have C uh, Der Der Deron Sebron for the uh, for uh, NC State as well. He was another prospect in this draft. But I like this game a lot. Speedy, but under control. Could get his own shot. And like I said, that that's definitely something that the Bucks need. I'm very I'm I'm curious to see if he's actually six four. I want to see real quick after the measurements have been out. I'm, I hate to do this during the on a video but is it Quavion Smith really 64 bro it's saying 64 shit he looks super super smaller super super smaller now I'm seeing now I'm seeing 63 Deron Sebron to Quavion Smith ponder NBA draft decisions after combat but yeah uh super super good pick uh, at 25, the Spurs taking Nikola Jovic. Uh, I always laugh when I say that name because we have Nikola Jokic. Now we're going to have Nikola Jovic. Uh, yeah, very good prospect, though. Surprised he's going as low as he is, but definitely a San Antonio Spurs type guy. International, uh, shoots the ball really well. Ha ha has some some defensive issues, but I think they could be fixed with, with uh, San Antonio. I love his size. Even like his passing can be an explosive athlete at times. Um, it just makes all the sense in the world for the Spurs to get Nikola Jovic, uh, if you're familiar with him. 18 years old. Um, I like him, though. I like him. I think he I think he could be big time um, in the right situation. And San Antonio knows a thing or two about having an international prospect um, on their roster to be developed. Um, at 26, the Mavericks are taking Marshawn Bochamp. Again, like a lot of these teams in this mock is passing up on guys like 
Patrick Baldwin Jr. who I think could come in and really shoot the, the hell out of the ball. And really quick, is Patrick Baldwin Jr. on here? He's not. Oh, he is. Okay, they have him going at 29 to the Grizzlies, which I like a lot. I like a lot. And I do like Kendall Brown going to Oklahoma City. Um, Jake LaRavia going to, to Golden State. Seems cool. That seems cool. I could think of some better options there, but that seems that seems real. Um, Kennedy Chandler to the Heat makes sense as a Kyle Lowry uh, protege, I could see. But Marjan Bochamp, I think, would probably be a little better maybe with the with the Warriors or uh, with the Grizzlies. But Patrick Baldwin Jr., if you're Dallas and you have a chance to get Patrick Baldwin Jr., seeing the way that they shoot around Luka, how the offense has been throughout its playoffs, you got to get Patrick Baldwin Jr. You don't let you don't take Marjan Bochamp. I like him. I like Bochamp, but you got to go get Patrick Baldwin Jr. Uh, Kendall Brown, again, <laughs> another guy that will be with the Thunder that just has all of this potential uh, defensive playmaking. And I think who I forget, they took Usman, Usman Dieng. You already have Poku. I just don't know how he goes there and really is able to develop into the prospect that you hope for him. So I, the, the Thunder have to make a trade this year. Let's just say that. That's how I want to end this video. The th that's all hope that the Thunder makes some type of trade. Hell, even the Grizzlies. They got a lot of picks. Uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Bryce McGowan. I, I actually keep those picks. But Oklahoma City Thunder, I'm trying to process how all of these guys go there and develop in some way to be their best version. Not that every prospect you draft is going to reach their fullest potential, but damn, you have to give them a chance. And the more and more I look at this, I'm not really liking the opportunity for some of these guys that have... Uh, that they have going to the thunder i'm just not um uh, this is the, the the reaction to the athletic mock draft i give it a b minus uh some of these teams i think could have made a lot of better decisions and i also don't like some of the the guys that slid. like johnny davis went real low i don't like uh baji to the hornets um T tari eason i think would have been better with the hornets i think um i love the tie tie washington to the rockets but Johnny Davis falling low. I do love Mark Williams. I think D Dyson Daniels probably goes a little bit higher. Um, but overall, yeah, I'll give it like a B, B minus. Um, but yeah, soon we're going to be dropping my mock draft. We're going to continue to uh, react to some to some uh, mock drafts. If y'all have mock drafts out there that y'all see that y'all think would be good for me to react to, send them my way. Uh, ESPN, I wanted to react to, but I'm not paying for ESPN Plus to react to their draft. They out of their mind. So, uh, as always, though, I am PB the plug. I'm glad I'm back. I missed y'all, uh, and I'll be seeing y'all soon with more draft content. Peace.